Hello everyone, my name is Kurt, and today I would like to welcome you to Orbiter 2010 Space Flight Simulator. Um, this I mentioned before in an earlier Minecraft video um, when I was talking about astronomy or space related games. Um, this is the first time I've played the game, actually the second time. Um, I tried to record earlier but it didn't really work out because the sound is all messed up. Um, Basically, um, it's an open source game that's not really a game. They try to remind you that as you're installing it and as you're reading the instruction manual. This is not a game, it's a simulator. Um, so no fun is to be had here. It's a serious business. But, uh, and basically, the, I learned the hard way that the, if you just download the basic orbiter and then install it, um, there's no sound that comes with the game, no sound effects. So there's a separate add-on that somebody else made that adds sound to the game. And there's a whole bunch of other add-ons that add other spacecraft and textures and things, but I ignored all those. I just wanted to get in and see what it was all about. Um, today I'm just going to be doing a tutorial mission. I'm not really in control of anything, but uh, as you can see, I'm here at Kennedy Space Center. Um, we got the, the VAB and everything, the processing areas over here. We have pad 39A and B, where the space shuttle takes off. That's the, on the far left, if you can see, is the, the landing strip where the space shuttle would land. But uh, let me zoom in. We are with Space Shuttle Atlantis today, um, ready to take off on, as you can see on the text there, on a resupply mission to the International Space Station. I'm not actually going to get there because uh, this takes quite a while. Uh, in real life, it takes them a couple days to get to the space station, but in, even in this simulation, this, this tutorial, it takes quite a while. So I think we're just going to play through... Uh, well, not play. It's not a game. We're going to go through uh, basically the launch and then when it separates from the external tank, and then I think we'll stop there. That's about 15 minutes. So. Uh, Anyway, the, the reason I wanted to play this game is because tomorrow, uh, April, um, April <laughs> May 16th, um, the Space Shuttle Endeavor is going to be launching on its final flight. Hopefully, there's always a chance for a scrub or a 24-hour turnaround or things like that. But uh, as of now, everything is underway for launch at 8.56 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is... 7.56 a.m. Central Time, where I'm at, and for those of you elsewhere on the globe, it's uh, 12.56 Universal Time, so do the math and tune in. Um, it's always very exciting. I recommend you watch on NASA TV, which is available through nasa.gov. Um, they have uh, links there to the high def and regular definition streams. Um, it's really cool to watch it on NASA TV because they carry the whole everything from when the astronauts get suited up and um, which is like two hours before launch and even on well after the launch usually you can watch it on like CNN or MSNBC or something they'll just carry the launch but then they cut away on NASA TV you'll be able to see the whole thing the the tank separation from cameras on the tank which is really cool and you get all the radio chatter between the astronauts and ground control uh, whereas on like the news channels you'll have to listen to like the commentators and things like that but uh, it's up to you. I'm going to be tuning in, obviously. I'll wake up early and watch with my morning cup of coffee, so uh, that's really cool. I always get very, I don't know why, I always up into the countdown, I get very nervous. <laughs> it's, even though I'm, I'm not on, I'm not even anywhere near Florida right now, but, uh, and even also, let me just say, if you are anywhere around Florida, um, tune in. It's going to be a morning launch. Those are always really cool. Um, well, don't tune in. You can actually probably look outside. I, I, I haven't seen a space shuttle launch from up close. Um, I had tickets a couple times. Uh, I went down there last October to just see. Um, I met a bunch of people from Twitter doing the NASA tweet up thing, but uh, that got postponed months. Um, so I missed that. Uh, I d was lucky enough. I was in Tampa once and uh, there was a midnight launch and I happened to be able to go out on the balcony of my hotel and see even from across the state of Florida, you could see off on the, uh, off on the horizon, the big, uh, at midnight, the whole uh, eastern horizon lit up like the sun was rising, and I was able to see the flames rise up into the sky from that far away, uh, so that was really cool. Um, I am going to try 
in June, or actually possibly July, it's been pushed back to, is the final space shuttle mission. Um, that is with Atlantis, which is actually what we're, we're flying right now. Um, so uh, I might try to get down there for that. It's going to be a madhouse, but uh, as the final shuttle flight, I've got to try at least to check it out. Um, so yes, there's that. Please check that out tomorrow. I know I will be. Um, but for now, we're going to try Orbiter. I'm going to unpause it. I've chatted long enough. Um, like I said, Orbiter, um, I think it was just made by one guy, uh, a PhD professor from uh, London, Department of Computer Science, some University of London. Atlantis is ready to... You're pad setting out, oh. Neil. Uh, you're not readable. Neil? <laughs> I think that's... Uh, they're reusing like Apollo 11 audio there. Um, flight is pre-recorded, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm not in the cockpit. Let me get in the cockpit here. Oop sort of in the cockpit. How do I... I want to be in the actual... Ah, this isn't a very user-friendly game as I found out. There we go. In the actual virtual cockpit. It's kind of cool. Board cut off. Oop, sorry. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. I'm in the commander's seat. Nobody, nobody's coming along with me, apparently. They don't trust me. Um, but yeah, I'm actually not in control of this. This is just kind of a tutorial playback. Um, we're just going to be along for the ride. Uh, let's see. What was I saying? Oh, this the game originally came... Not a game, it's a simulator. It originally came out in 2000. Um, it's built by one guy. And there have been updates and things like that. And this is the most recent version. was released in August 2010. Um, which is apparently the first time they've included these sort of autopilot tutorial kind of missions because before that you had to actually take off and control the space shuttle yourself which is something in real life the astronauts don't even do. I don't know how many of you know that but the whole launch program is done by computers and things like that and uh, obviously the pilots and astronauts are there keeping a check on everything and in case anything does go wrong they can take over but uh, the launch sequence is, is all automated, so it's kind of interesting. I might come back and try to do the launch sequence myself and try to take off, but it will be a miserable failure, and I, I don't know how I feel about crashing a space shuttle, even though it's in the uh, in a computer game here. So, uh, yeah, this, this tutorial is kind of going through typing things. Apparently, you're supposed to type things into this window here. Uh, it's like asking me to type in launch. Uh, and it would sync up uh, in the upper right hand corner there's a little timer there so it says enter this at 120 seconds to sync up with the plague vac 17, 18, 19, 20 obviously execution error because I'm not really in control here but uh, 10, oh 9, 8, that was really loud has started. <laughs> 6, 5, 4, oh. 3 Two, one, zero. We have commit and we have liftoff. The uh, the launch sequence, the countdown is obviously not Neil, synchronized. Mail, this is Houston. Uh, request an EMU check over. Roll program. The graphics aren't all that great, but uh, the the textures on the space shuttle and the spacecraft are really cool. So that's obviously uh, where you're going to be spending the majority of your time. So that makes sense. Taken off. Throttling down for maximum dynamic pressure, max Q. See, that's another problem is there's not not any uh, audio to go along with that. That's kind of disappointing. But this is kind of cool anyway. There's also another futuristic spacecraft, like a glider that they have that's apparently easier to fly than the space shuttle. Maybe I'll try that one time, but for now I think we'll just watch this. Kind of a precursor to actually watching a real space shuttle launch tomorrow, so... What are we at here? I think in... Uh, what do we start? 120 seconds? Neil, this is Houston. Uh, request an EMU check over. It's just playing that same loop over and over again. <laughs> Jeez. Um, it should be at 1 or 240 seconds is when the, the booster should separate, unless this is out of sync, but... Uh, Let's go back inside and see how loud it is. Whoa. 
and back outside. Kind of cool effects. Uh, the stars are a little bit overdone, I think. <laughs> I don't think they'd be that bright, but... Uh, yes, booster separation anytime now. Come on. There we go. It's kind of cool. The uh, <laughs> the rocket exhaust is kind of weird looking. It's. Roger, understand. I, I understand. Yes, I do. <laughs> the the, uh, the the exhaust is kind of clipped there on the ends. I don't know. Obviously, this isn't done by any big uh, video game studio or anything like that, so I'll give them credit that they got, obviously, they, they, com yeah, bleh, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, they concentrated, bleh, they concentrated on the physics and the, uh, the thrust and all the physics that go into getting into orbit and things like that, which is why before there was autopilot in this game, it, it was nearly impossible for anybody to get in into outer space just because, uh, you had to enter in all these mathematics and physics and take into account the fuel weight and stuff like that. So there was a lot of complaints about that. So maybe that's why they recently added the autopilot and tutorial missions. But uh, very interesting. Obviously, the sound is kind of... There's no sound in space. That Milky Way is way too bright. <laughs> that, that, that's uh, a little bit overdone. But I think that's one of the things... Uh, Except for the audio, uh, this is pretty much a vanilla installation. So uh, I think there's extra things where you can increase the textures on the Earth and other planets and the sky. Um, on the vanilla installation, there's only Space Shuttle Atlantis. You have to find another add-on to add the other space shuttles and like Apollo spacecraft and you can even do the Mercury spacecraft and things like that. Futuristic spacecraft, I'm sure. There's a bunch of things like that, but... Uh, Fast-forwarding to external tank separation. That's what we're looking forward to. Um, I am somewhat impressed by the how detailed the textures on the space shuttle are, so I'll give them that much. <laughs> the Earth, uh, obviously it appeared that they only really bothered doing the high-resolution textures around the Cape, uh, Cape where they, they launched, uh, Kennedy Space Center. That kind of makes sense. We got some weird glitching and clipping in the sky. The... whoa! we The uh, rolling upright maneuver. And this is cool to watch tomorrow if you're watching on NASA TV. Like I said, the CNN and the other stations usually cut away before this, but there's cameras on the external side of the fuel tank that will... you'll be able to see this whole roll. Um, some neat sound effects there. See the roll, and you'll be able to watch as the uh, external tank falls away from the space shuttle in the video feed tomorrow. So that's always cool. There we go. That's a better view. But yes, as you know, um, NASA astronomy, space flight, very big interests of mine. Um, when is this going to detach here? Oh, what's going on? Am I losing the camera? There we go. Okay. Detached, floating away. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can see the, the thrusters coming out of the nose and on the rear of the space shuttle there. So you push away from the external tank, which will burn up in the atmosphere. Whoa, watch the tail there, guys. You're getting kind of close. I don't think they get that close in real life. I could be wrong, but uh, that seems kind of close. Yeah. Don't want to damage the tiles, please. Ohms, one burn. There we go. Ah, kind of neat and lighting effects. Watch the tail. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, those are loud. Yeah, that's another thing. Because it's an external add-on that you control the, the audio with, you really can't 
like right now that's kind of loud I should have turned it down so you could hear my voice but I can't there's no controls within the game because it's an external uh, add-on that controls the sound so as a uh, I guess my uh, first impression um, yes this is not a game <laughs> this is uh, I haven't tried the other the other futuristic glider uh, aircraft that might be a little bit more fun to use but uh, if you're looking for something, oh, I want to launch a space shuttle and see what that's like in a game, uh, this really isn't pick up and play. It took me a couple hours just to find the add-ons and the downloads and installation configurations and things like that. Uh, but now that I have it installed, I might come back and do another Let's Play, maybe. But uh, as we enter into orbit and the external tank flies away into the distance, I think this is where I'm going to cut it off. We're at about 16 minutes, so uh, this has been a brief Let's Play. Um, my first time playing Orbiter 2010. Um, I really wasn't playing, I was just kind of watching the simulation happen, but uh, it's kind of educational also These uh, with the tutorials. They let you know what's going on and why it's happening, so that's kind of cool, but uh, yeah, maybe I'll come back. I just kind of wanted to do this to, as a kind of an intro and get people to uh, let people know that tomorrow there is a space shuttle launch. So be sure to check that out. I'll put links in this video description to where you can watch and information. Um, and also on Twitter, if you want to follow the uh, the hashtag uh, STS134 and also follow NASA TweetUp because there's a TweetUp going on. There's a lot of people at the Kennedy Space Center who's re who are going to watch the launch, so that's always a kind of an interesting perspective. I wish I was there. <laughs> single tier. I don't know why I pantomimed on my face the single tier. You guys can't see that, but uh, anyway. I will be back soon with more Minecraft and other things. Um, but thank you for watching. Please uh, comment, uh, like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and I will see you next time.